work am i dear students of class 9a to my civic class this is your revision class and last lesson i am going to revise already few points already a uh, few points uh, i have revised and rest of the points i am going to revise please look at the board and see how many points are there to be revised number 1 written constitution a written constitution number 2 preamble to the constitution number 3 sovereign secular democratic republic 3 4 5 6 7 and seven ideals of the preamble ideals of the preamble to the constitution now first point a written constitution you know Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, uh, you know, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, before drafting the Constitution of India, consulted a number of distinguished members of the Legislative Assembly. Under their supervision, under their advice, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar worked. before drafting the constitution of india dr b r ambedkar felt that constitution of different countries of the world should be consulted and for that reason he traveled many european countries and discussed with their distinguished members the members of the house of commons of britain the members of you know uh, the members of the president's house and parliament of america members of ireland members of the parliament of ireland members of the parliament of ussr united states of soviet republic so in course of his journey what he felt was one constitution should be framed for india must be written in character and in order to make it a written constitution the constitution of our country had become lengthiest one now i am going to give i am going to clarify why what was the reason the constitution of india had become lengthiest one so this is about the written constitution now question is why had it become a lengthiest constitution of the world you know india is a country of different languages different cultures different customs different traditions different religious beliefs and faith and of course different sentiments of people in order to provide them equal opportunities in order to <clears throat> make them understand that they belong to an independent country having uh, their rights to be exercised that's why dr b r ambedkar had to uh, uh, had to uh, clarify different uh, you know different causes different requirements of different people of india that's why the constitution of india automatically had become the lengthiest constitution of the world moreover some you know constitution of the world like the constitution of britain the constitution of you know america the constitution of uh, ireland and of course the constitution of ussr dr b r ambedkar had to consult so why consult consulting this type of constitution the dr b r ambedkar uh, had to uh, had to uh, point out different clause clauses different articles different he had to make a number of articles as per the requirement of the indian system of uh, judicial procedure so that the courts uh, can work the courts can uh, the courts could work properly while giving their verdicts from junior level to up to the upper level that's why dr b r ambedkar uh, and not only that dr b r ambedkar also was uh, instruct uh, also was suggested 
by the distinguished members of the Legislative Assembly that a, a, a written constitution should be framed for India and by framing that very constitution, uh, it, may, it might be lengthiest one, but the distinguished members of the as Legislative Assembly uh, would not have any objection for that. For that reason, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar framed the constitution of India wholeheartedly and while framing that very constitution, it had automatically become the lengthiest constitution of the world. And the next point, my dear students, next point, tremble to the constitution. Next point, tremble to the constitution. Tremble to the constitution. What is tremble to the constitution? Now I am going to re-explain. The tremble, what is the meaning of tremble? The tremble is the introduction of the constitution with necessary articles uh, by uh, safeguarding the interest of our country, its sovereignty, uh, its, uh, its sovereignty, its national integrity. This is tremble. The spirit and values of the Indian people also are safeguarded through the system of Premble. So the, the Premble to the constitution, the Premble to our constitution uh, is not merely an introduction, of a consti uh, uh, introduction to the constitution. It is the essence of the constitution. It contains the spirit and values of the Indian people and then uh, it reflects also the aims and objectives of our constitution. That's why the preamble is very important to our constitution. It is not enforceable in the court of law, but the preamble to the constitution indicates two major points. Number one, it highlights the goals of our nation, which the constitution tries to establish and achieve. Number two, it points, it points to the source from which the constitution derives authority. Then the Indian constitution declared India a sovereign democratic republic by a resolution passed by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru on December 22, 1946. And two additional words, socialist and secular, were introduced by the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. Two additional words, socialist and secular. Now, why was it? Because the two words, socialist and secular, the two words proved that India was a country having uh, people of different castes and tradition, customs and traditions who lived peacefully within their societies. And they, it is a secular in nature, where while it is secular in nature, that's why the people of different languages, different cultures, different traditions, different communities, they, they can uh, live here peacefully and they can safeguard their interests, they can exercise their religious freedoms and all rights given to, given uh, by the constitution. So this is temple to the constitution. Um, the, while um, adding it to the constitution of India, one eminent person of India played an important role. He was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. And next one, secular. What is this? Some points now I am going to discuss about sovereign. Sovereign I discussed, now secular. What is secular? Secular means a country having a country without having any state religion. Religions for all, for all communities and all communities uh, would exercise uh, their religious freedoms and rights without being interrupted by the state. State would not interfere uh, in, uh, in exercising religious freedoms and uh, uh, religious freedoms and liberties by any any community of India. That means India does not have any official state religion. Every person has the right to preach. Every person has the right to press their practice their religious beliefs and faith. And every religion has 
uh, uh, has the right to propagate any religion he or she chooses and besides the government should not favor any particular religion that does uh, the government should not discriminate against any religion of india all citizen irrespective of caste creed uh, communities uh, beliefs religious beliefs are equal in the eyes of the law that's why all religions should be treated equally all religions should be treated with equal respect so this is about secular my dear students and next one democratic next point democratic what is democratic democratic means the people of india uh, elect their government elect their government at all levels means union level state level and local level by a system of election or universal adult franchise universal and universal adult franchise where the uh, you know the uh, people having 18 years of age or more than 18 years can cast can cast their votes without being discriminated and can choose their representatives and after uh, after the system after the uh, conducting election a government is formed uh, directly by the people and then the government can work smoothly for the all round development of the country and in that case every citizen can enjoy their rights every citizen can enjoy, enjoy their uh, liberties without any discrimination on the basis of caste creed religion communities and race so this is about democratic and next one republic what is this what is republic? Republic means India has an elected head or state. And democratic country, democratic country always had, always has a sense uh, for uh, the growth and development of the people. As, an, as the head of the state, that very country uh, is elected, that, that very country's government is elected by the people directly or indirectly for a fixed tenure and the president of india also is elected indirectly through the electoral college for a term of five years the post of the president of india is not hereditary this is the system of our country known as a republic that means people are the source of all powers people can choose their representative people can vote for uh, making one person to be their representative according to which a government is formed and the government can run smoothly for a term for a fixed tenure of five years or six years and as soon as the tenure is over the government uh, the the same gov the same political party may come to the power or may not come to the power it is depending on their performance of five years it is depending on we are, you know, uh, acceptability towards the people and uh, it is depending on their feedback. That's why, my dear students, the people's role in a democratic country is very important. They choose their representative. They can overthrow, their, uh, overthrow them from power after five years or six years and uh, can uh, choose another representative according to which another political party may come to power and can form a government in the union or in state or in local level. And next point my dear students, last point, ideals of the temple. Ideals of the temple. What is it? Ideals of the temple? Justice. Justice does not realize. Justice, you know, does not restrict itself to only legal aspect but it is used in a wider context of fairness and equality justice means uh, equal justice for each and every person whether the person is a poor whether person is rich that is depending on the character of cases but what is the role of the courts from junior level to upper level 
for lower level to the upper level each and every court is supposed to provide equal justice for each and every person who generally go to the court for proper judgment but there is a system if any person uh, does not uh, does not prefer or does not like any system of judgment uh, by lower court in that case in that case that person can go to the higher court for better verdict better judgment and the last one is the supreme court the supreme court is the highest judicial organ of the country the person at last can go by spending money to the supreme court and the decision of the supreme court is final supreme court uh, can clarify uh, each and every point thoroughly uh, uh, clarify as for the requirements of the character uh, requirement of the cases a number of articles are thoroughly clarified by the judges of the supreme court and uh, finally the chief justice uh, come comes to a comes to a conclusion and give, gives his verdict and no one can challenge the verdict given by the chief justice in the supreme court except the case uh, is important uh, for the uh, president of india but the president sometimes can reduce the punishment but generally and the president does not interfere in the system of judicial procedure uh, 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 executed by the supreme court so this is, these are the points my dear students if you have any confusion any problem uh, you can ask me question to my live class i shall uh, get your doubts clear i shall clarify it thoroughly for your better understanding thank you